Well, welcome to this week's Q on Q. It's part four of our series, Back to Basics. So, so far, this series, we have talked about getting back to basics with boundaries in our lives, in our relationships, and in dealing with change. And I really appreciate all of the feedback that I've received on how people have recentered things in our lives on these topics. I really have loved putting these together for all of you, but I believe God is giving them to me for me, and I'm just honored that I get to share them with all of you. I have to apologize for the delay since our last episode came out. It is summer break now, and things have kind of caught up with us schedule-wise. I also had a minor surgical procedure that set me back for a few days. Uh, Nothing major. I am doing well. Appreciate your prayers as I continue to navigate through that, but I'm just glad to be back on track schedule-wise as we continue to enjoy some of this summertime with family. Well, my original plan for this week's topic, as you heard the last time if you tuned in, was to talk about getting back to basics with our families. This is something I've wanted to share about for some time, but I really didn't know what to talk about. And after a lot of time and thinking about what I wanted to say, God took me in another direction. So I'm going to put that topic on pause for a little bit. And I started to see some clarity for a new direction, but sort of in the same series. You can probably tell if you've looked at the uh, preview on any of my social medias for this week's, that this week is not about families. Instead, this week, we're going to be talking about communication, getting back to the basics of just plain talking to each other. Um, I want to preface by saying, as I often do, I don't have a magic cure for how to fix issues you might be having with communication. These are just my practical suggestions based on what has worked for us and some of the situations that I've gone through in the past. Well, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary says communication is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals. Communication is really a complex blend of words, body language, tone, and timing. Using effective communication is a key to effective relationships with others. It's one of the most important skills we can master. Think about my own kids when they were younger, and they needed to communicate in an important situation, and they just didn't know the words, or they emulated what they saw in how we as parents handled something, just because they were still mastering that skill of communicating. Every relationship we have, whether it's personal or professional, depends on communication, and it's something we continue to develop with friends, with colleagues, with our spouse, with our kids, with our families. It doesn't matter who it's with. We do it in a bunch of different ways, and that has certainly changed as time has gone on. 20 years ago, text messages weren't a regular part of what we do, and today, most of us send and receive thousands of them literally a month. We spend most of our time awake sending and receiving messages. I heard it said one time, words are the currency of human interaction. We are called to relate to others, to communicate and live life with others. This is by design. God created us to use words, to explain, to ask questions, to encourage others and to challenge them, to give approval, to express resentment, to share praise and appreciation and disappointment. At the heart of every relationship is communication, and at the center of every strong relationship is good communication. When we use words the right way, we build each other up. When we use words the wrong way, communication breaks down, and then relationships are damaged and alignment is weakened. When we're able to effectively communicate, any situation can be ultimately better. It's so important for us to know what to say how to say it, when to say it. And those things require discipline and patience. It's easy to carelessly throw words around. It's easy to just react instantly how we feel we should without thinking about how it affects somebody else. But if we say or do the wrong things, we produce stress on a relationship. The scriptures spell out very clearly many times as to how effective communication is, what we say, How we approach what others say really does matter. Look at Proverbs 18. It says this, verses 20 to 21. This is the message translation. Words satisfy the mind as much as fruit does the stomach. Good talk 
is as gratifying as a good harvest. Words kill. Words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. Did you catch that? Words give life or they can kill. What you say and how you say it affects so much. If you've been in a friendship or relationship or marriage for more than even a few moments, you already know poor communication makes everything more difficult. Whether it's solving problems, parenting, resolving conflict, or even something as simple as what to have for dinner, all those things are difficult when you can't communicate with another person. Here's where I think we get it wrong, and this is just my opinion. We too often try to just agree to disagree and find some meet-in-the-middle solution to the differences versus looking at and fixing how we communicate with others. Now, I'm not saying it's not always a bad thing to meet somebody in the middle. Compromise is a wonderful thing in the right circumstances, but too often we just give up and nothing is improved in the situation and we don't make any attempt to communicate with someone. This approach can lead to small steps of progress, at least in our minds, but it rarely resolves any major difficulties. I even love these words in Proverbs 25 more. Verse 11, and again, this is the message translation. The right word at the right time is like a custom-made piece of jewelry. Think about that. I remember getting my wife a mother's necklace some years back with our kids' birthstones in them. I remember how surprised she was and have seen how much she has cherished it through the years, putting it in the box and keeping it very neat and keeping it clean and put away when she's not using it. I know how much it costs, and that's not important, but the fact is that the custom-made jewelry has a special meaning to her, and she has continued to cherish that through the years. Likewise, the right words the right communication strategies, the right conversation at the right time can have a long-lasting impact for good and for bad. The fact is that good communication, simple communication strategies, can simplify our relationships. Yes, believe it or not, talking to people makes things easier and allows us to connect with others on a better and deeper level. I know, shocking concept, right? When we communicate with somebody, a lot of times we assume we know that the other person knows what we're thinking, and we assume we know what they're thinking. We structure our conversation in a certain way because of our assumptions, but the fact is that such an assumption on both sides doesn't allow effective communication to happen. It requires both sides asking and seeking. So how do we do that? How do we simply make our communication the best it can be, really in a simple way? Well, I think it boils down to three things, the what, the why, and the how. Here's what I mean. What we say makes all the difference, the words that come out of our mouths, how much we reach out, but sometimes why we communicate is just as, if not more, important. What are our intentions for reaching out to or connecting with someone? And perhaps most importantly is how we communicate. What methods do we use? Are we short with people? Do we have a certain tone in our voice? Well, let's start with the what. What you say, what you type, what you communicate through your body language matters. I'm a wordy guy. (laughs) I like to use a lot of words, often way more than I need to in order to uh, get a point across. Sometimes I repeat the same thing three times using different words. Um, just to think I'm getting my point across. But really, why use 100 words when 10 will do? Unless you need that much to get your full message across. Unfortunately, many of us just keep rehashing the same thing over and over, just using different words. Keeping what you're trying to get across as something simple and concise and to the point will make it easier for others to understand and remember. The thing we need to remember is that most of the time, we already know what we're going to say, but the other party is hearing it for the first time. And I know it's not always cut and dry. Maybe we're communicating with somebody and we know exactly what we want to say, but as soon as we open our mouth, it doesn't go exactly as we planned. I get that. There are times we can be planned and planned and double and triple checked, and we may end up saying something different than what we had originally thought we were going to say. But the point is this. Too often, 
we make too much out of what we're going to say. I teach a unit in school on planning multimedia projects. And one of the things I always hit with my students is how important developing your message is. Most of the time, we have one principal message that we're trying to get across, even if it's based on a broad topic. The more we say, the more big words we use, the more we try to jam-pack into our conversation, the less likely the other party is going to stay focused the whole time. Attempt to understand everything you say or remember all of what you say. I think about sending emails at work. If I want to communicate a bunch of things to people, I really don't like sending a bunch of different emails with one or two things in them, like multiple times a day. But the fact is this, if I send one email with a bunch of things, nobody reads past the first few lines and then I end up sending 100 emails anyways. (laughs) That's happened in the past. We put together a bunch of dates in one large document at one time and I still ended up sending reminders every day just to make sure people knew what was going on. What about the why? What are intentions for reaching out to or connecting with someone? When communicating with somebody, even about the simplest of things, you have to think about what you hope to accomplish by having the conversation, both in the immediate and the long term. Why are you reaching out? Understanding your objectives will help shape your how and make your communication more effective. Communication helps us build relationships by allowing us to share our experiences and needs and helps us connect to others. The important question is, why are you connecting with someone? Is it to build a genuine connection with them? Is it platonic? Is it romantically intended? Is it for a selfish reason? Is it to build or even salvage a friendship or some other relationship? Oftentimes, we know deep down why we're communicating with somebody but we're afraid to remind ourselves of that before we communicate. I think we forget that communication is designed to be cooperative. Communication doesn't work one way. We usually approach a conversation with the expectation that both sides, or more than two parties, if there's that many involved, will be involved in some way. This can get complicated if people in the interaction have conflicting viewpoints or goals or motives, It becomes even harder if their motives or goals in a conversation are implied rather than actually stated. If you know why you're communicating, does the other party know why also? If not, it can create an opportunity for misunderstanding or confusion. But in saying all that, communication isn't just about what you say. It's also about the how. This is where how comes into all of this. Body language, your method for communication is so important. Tone of voice is essential. How you arrange the conversation, how you start the conversation, the first words you speak, the how has a chance to set up success or set up failure right from the start. I'm not implying that you can't recover from that, but as communication is continuing, How you respond makes all the difference. If you want people to listen to you, you need to listen to them. We can't get so focused on what we're saying that we miss their important statements and fail to realize their emotions and reactions. I've used this reference before, but author Stephen Covey in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, notes the number five habit as seek first to understand, then to be understood. For most of us, we seek first to be understood. We want to get our point across. But in doing so, we might be ignoring the other person completely. We could be pretending to listen while dwelling on our own thoughts or selectively hearing only certain parts of what they're saying or being focused on the fact that they're talking but missing what they're saying entirely. So why does this happen? Because of how we communicate. Without realizing it, our body language can send a stronger message than our words. If we sit or stand with our shoulders hunched and our arms crossed, we give off a visual that we seem disinterested, whether it's true or not. That seems one-sided and sets up a conversation with a bad start. Likewise, the same speech or manner of presentation doesn't work with everyone or every situation. We have to think about and modify how we're going to say what we're going to say 
if we want our communication to be effective. Otherwise, we might come across as condescending or speaking in a way in which the other party just can't understand. We also have to keep in check the pace of how we're communicating. This can be both talking, like how quickly or slowly or loud or soft we're speaking, but also in written form, like too many text messages or emails. Uh, maybe you're barraging somebody with messages, seven, eight, nine in a row because they haven't responded. Or on the flip side of that, you allow days to go in between and somebody on the other side is thinking that you're not going to reply. Assess the situation. Slow down if necessary. Be patient. Wait for responses as long as you can reasonably do so. Scriptures very clearly tell us we need to be able to discern when's a good time to initiate or continue communication or respond to somebody. It doesn't make any sense to force your way through a misunderstanding when the other person is already upset and in a bad mood. In any connection with somebody, being honest in your communication is important. But being effective in your communication is just as, if not more, important. When you don't know what to do, and even when you do, pray about what you should say and how you should handle a situation, and for the wisdom and insight into how to handle timing for communication when there might be difficulty. Pray for what to say, how to say it, and for calmness in your heart that your why is in check. I think most people are quick to speak, but they're not so quick to listen. Listening requires us to engage with others, seeking to understand what's going on within their hearts and their minds. For believers, our style of communication should be very different from what the world tells us we should do. The media portrays communication of leaders and celebrities as often loud, bold, in your face, and often one-sided and unkind. If we're being honest and genuine in our communication, we need to know why we're communicating. Pray about the best how to approach it and be ready to engage in conversation, not treating anything as a one-sided discussion. And with all that, I have to reiterate, it's important that communication is even happening. If you're having difficulty communicating with somebody, avoidance of any possible conflict is not the hallmark of a good connection. You can have your opinion. You can have good ideas, great ideas. You can be brilliant. But if you're not willing to or can't get them across, or if you're not willing to listen, you won't go anywhere. What, why, and how. And being intent on listening. Those are the simple hallmarks of effective communication. Now I know you're probably sitting there saying, it's easier said than done, pal, and I agree with you 99.9%. Communication, in reality, can be complex and challenging, but yet I still go back to the fact that we can build our communication. We can develop how we communicate, become better at it by the simple principles I presented. Take it back to the what, the why, and the how. Most people think they're good at communicating, but really few have mastered the art. While communication may never be perfect, it can always be better. If you feel there are lapses in communication between you and another party, don't squarely put the blame on the other person or on yourself either. Ask yourself some questions. Am I talking more than I'm listening? Do I make eye contact when I talk to someone? Does my word choice and my tone of voice encourage conversation and build bridges? Am I making others feel heard and respected? George Bernard Shaw once said, The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. While communication can be and seem hard, it all comes down to trusting one another, allowing each other to be open, honest, and vulnerable. This can happen in personal conversation and professional ones. Stephen Covey, who I referenced a little bit ago, gave this reflection on the difficulty of communication. He said, When the trust account is high, communication is easy, instant, and effective. Remember, friends, your why, your what, 
your how. Think about those things and watch what impact it can have on how you connect with others. Well, friends, it's been great being with you again. Thank you again for listening. Thank you for being a supporter, whether it's been for one episode or 72 episodes. Um, It's your prayers and your support and your listening that keeps us going. Don't forget, you can always support us by listening on most major podcast providers or on YouTube. Um, Look for new exciting stuff coming the rest of the summer. And as always, I really do appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you back here next time, and we'll have more for you on cue.